EAS reactions with nitrogen heterocycles. So uh, early in this course, we learned about electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, and we always only considered either benzene or substituted benzene. So, but it turns out different uh, aromatic heterocycles, those including nitrogen, which would be amines here, like parole and pyridine, also can undergo EAS reactions. And predicting where it occurs, because now it's not just plain old benzene where all six positions are equivalent, uh, it turns out it's going to happen in a specific position. Now, word of the wise, not all of you are going to have this incorporated into your undergraduate curriculum. So, uh, if this is not something you cover, then by all means, just skip right on over this video. So but probably roughly 40-50% of you will have had this incorporated into your undergraduate curriculum and I've made this video for you. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist that I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson or when I begin posting a new playlist, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so we're going to start with parole here. And it, Turns out parole here, we say that EAS happens at the two position. Well, what does that mean? Well, if we look at uh, these nitrogen heterocycles, we always define the nitrogen as being at the one position. And so then either adjacent carbon is at the two position, and then further down the chain, those would be the three positions. That's the kind of the way this works. So we don't have like ortho meta pair or anything like that. We just have one, two, and three. And it turns out EAS is going to occur at this two position, and we've got to explain why. Well, it turns out we're just going to get the most stable intermediate possible when we happen at the two position, as opposed to happening at the three position. So let's kind of take a look at why. So if we do nucleophilic attack on our electrophile here, and we want to attach that at that two position, that's going to leave us with a carbocation right here. And that carbocation is definitely going to be resonant stabilized. We can move these around right here, get an additional resonant structure. Leaves your carbocation right in this position. And this is one away from the nitrogen who's got a lone pair. And so we'll get one more additional resonant structure here as well. That'll put the positive formal charge on the nitrogen. Cool, and so that's kind of the deal. We're gonna get three resonant structures and even the nitrogen gets the share in uh, on that partial positive charge. And it turns out that is the major resonance contributor. So, and in similar cases, like we've seen in other examples, uh, in this case, when carbon is a carbocation, it does not have a filled octet, no filled octet. But nitrogen as a cation here has a filled octet. And there's more electrons in pi bonds and things of this sort. So it's the major resonance contributor. And so it turns out if we did this at the three position instead, so at the three position here, we'd have a carbocation here and the nitrogen can get involved and then we'd be done. And we'd have two resonance structures. And we kind of have two resonance structures that are analogous to like these two, but we wouldn't get this third one. And that's why it's gonna predominantly happen at the two position. We just get more resonance structures and a more stable sigma complex intermediate. Uh, along the way when we substitute at the two positions. So notice I'm not showing the whole mechanism from here. We just have to go and deprotonate uh, to reestablish aromaticity and stuff like that. But I just want to show it as, it's all about the intermediate. Uh, same thing is going to be true here with pyridine as well, but it turns out pyridine is going to happen at the three position. So once again, the nitrogen is number one. We've got two number twos, two number threes, and a number four. And it turns out if substitution happens at the two or four position, there's a particular cation we're going to get that's particularly unfavorable in this case. So it's not like parole here where we can see that one is so good in comparison to the other. What we're going to find out is in this example, it's actually if you do substitution at the two or four position, you're going to have one that's so bad. And so that's why it's going to happen at the three. So we actually got to do uh, kind of two routes here. And so we're going to look at substitution either at the uh, three or four position, let's say. And so in this case, we're going to come do nucleophilic attack, and that could lead to one of two options here. So we could have it occurring at the three position, leaving a carbocation at the four position, or we could have it occurring at the four position, leaving our carbocation at the three position. 
All right, so here's our two options. And if we look at the top one here, we're definitely gonna have resonance for one bond away from pi electrons. So we'll move these here. Cool, and from here we normally think that, oh, carbocation's right next to a nitrogen with a lone pair, we should get another resonant structure here, but we're not going to in this case. We did up here in this case, but we can't do it here. If you notice, if we form another double bond right here, that's gonna make that nitrogen sp hybridized. So in this case, sp hybridization is associated with a bond angle of 180 degrees. Well, there's no way in a six-membered ring that you can get a bond angle of 180 degrees without crazy ring strain. It's just not going to happen. And so actually, we just get these two resonance structures. And so there's nothing so far that looks particularly great about this. So, But we'll find out if we do substitution at the four or at the two, as it would turn out. Uh, it's going to be particularly bad, as we'll see here. All right, so in this case, looks like we can get resonance yet again. So we're one bond away from pi electrons, so we should be able to move those down. So we get this lovely resonant structure right here. And in this case, this is rather funky. Uh, in this case, we've got this lovely nitrogen cation that's gonna be look a little unusual here. It's got two bonds and a lone pair. Uh, it, it is indeed got a positive formal charge, but we're used to seeing nitrogen with a positive formal charge when nitrogen's got four bonds and no lone pairs. So with two bonds and a lone pair, that is rather unique. So in this case, that nitrogen does not have a filled octet. Now, carbon not having a filled octet as a carbocation is fairly unstable. Nitrogen cation with no filled octet, crazy unstable. And you might be like, well, Chad, we can do more resonance. You're right, we can do more resonance. So and we get actually more resonant structures in this second example. But the problem is having one of those resonant structures being a nitrogen with a uh, no-filled octet is absolutely horrible. Never gonna happen kind of a thing. And so that's why it turns out substitution is gonna happen at the three position with pyridine because happening at the two or four would just be absolutely terrible for the stability of our intermediate. Cool, so summary here, parole, uh, substitution is gonna predominantly happen at the two position and for pyridine, substitution probably gonna happen at the three position. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? One of the best things you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson and to help promote the channel. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems on amines, if you're looking for my final exam rapid reviews or practice final exams, check out my premium course at chadsprep.com.